Hey guys, it's Shy of the Shy Narwhal. I love talking about Disney animated movies, as you can probably tell from the numerous videos on my channel covering various obscure and lost Disney topics. It's no secret by now that throughout the late 90s through the mid-2000s, Disney went on this direct-to-DVD movie kick in that they made a fortune selling sequels and spin-offs to their previous animated projects. I know it's fun to make fun of how bad a lot of these films were, but I'd be lying if I said some of them didn't have a special place in my heart. As someone who was born in the early 2000s, I did watch quite a bit of these as a kid, and so it's fun to just kind of go back and re-watch them every now and then just for nostalgia's sake. Disney was putting out countless direct dvd movies at the time, and because of that, a lot of projects were either changed or cancelled in favor of other ones. And I thought it'd be interesting to cover some of them in a video. So here it is. This week I'll be covering five cancelled direct dvd Disney movies. Let's get into it. This Disney DVD is enhanced with Disney's Fast Play. Your movie and a selection of bonus features will begin automatically. To bypass Fast Play, select the main menu button at any time. Fast Play will begin in a moment. Direct from Main Street, it's Disney's House of Mouse. The Search for Mickey Mouse was a cancelled film 10 years in the making, originally intended to celebrate Mickey Mouse's 75th birthday. The plot would have revolved around Mickey getting mouse-snapped, and in an attempt to find him, Minnie hires the Great Mouse Detectives, Basil of Baker Street. Basil, along with the rest of the Sensational Six, come across other Disney animated characters throughout their journey, such as Peter Pan, Alice, and Aladdin. It is speculated that the film would have been animated in CGI, in a similar manner to other directed dvd projects at the time, such as Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas. How far the film was along in development remained a mystery for years until 2005, when it was revealed on WDW Radio that The Search for Mickey Mouse was planned to be Walt Disney Animation Studios' 50th feature-length animated film. However, that title was given to 2010's Tangled. To this day, information on the search for Mickey Mouse remains limited, and it's safe to assume that the film was cancelled. There's no concept art, screenshots, or footage that has been made available online. Personally, I think this would have been a fun directed DVD film, but a strange theatrical release, which based on what little information I was able to find online, seems like a possible direction that the project was going to take. When reading about this film, it almost reminds me of that scene in Ralph Breaks the Internet where they visit Oh My Disney and come across all those Disney cameos. I have no idea if the two projects have anything to do with one another, but if they did, I think this concept worked much better as a scene in a movie rather than being the whole premise. I'm sure at this point, at least some of you are familiar with Disney's defunct Circle 7 animation. But just in case you aren't, here's a brief history. Back in the early 2000s, Disney created Circle 7 animation. Because Disney owned the rights to all the Pixar films and characters that had been released up to that point, the purpose of the studio was to essentially pump out sequels to all Pixar's films up until Cars. There are several projects in the works at Circle 7, including Monsters Inc. 2 Lost in Scaradice and Finding Nemo 2. However, the project that made it furthest into development was the original draft of Toy Story 3. The plot of this, what would have been direct to DVD film, starts off with Andy's mom shipping a malfunctioning Buzz Lightyear back to his manufacturer in Taiwan to be fixed. It turns out, however, there's actually been a recall on all Buzz Lightyear toys, and instead of being fixed, Buzz would have been destroyed and the Davis family would have been sent a replacement. It's then up to Woody, Slinky, Jesse, Ham, Bullseye, and the rest of the gang to go to Taiwan to save their friend. Upon arriving at the factory, Buzz quickly finds out that he's going to be destroyed, and he makes a break for it before the machine crushes him. During his escape, Buzz gets found by workers, and they take him to the boardroom where he meets new characters. In January of 2006, Bob Iger and Steve Jobs reached an agreement that Disney would buy Pixar for $7.4 billion. Upon this agreement, Circle 7 closed down and all of its projects were cancelled. Pixar's Toy Story 3 was released in theaters in June of 2010, and although both versions of this film have nothing to do with one another and the filmmakers didn't read the original script, I was surprised at just how many similarities the original draft and the final film have with one another. For example, Buzz Lightyear malfunctioning instantly reminded me of Buzz being switched from play to demo mode in the final film. Both versions also involve one or all of the main characters on conveyor belts, almost being burnt or crushed. 
They also involve an older, more grown-up Andy and his mom going through his old toys. I don't know, I found these similarities to be interesting. Today, there is quite a bit of concept art available online, and while I do think this premise sounds interesting, I'm really glad we got this Toy Story 3 rather than that one. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. What if you found out the sky was falling? Would you tell anyone? Would you be scared? Maybe even a little... Chicken? Ow. Chicken Little was released in 2005 and is most notable for being Walt Disney Animation Studios' first CGI animated film. The film's reception was mixed, but for whatever reason, there were plans to bring back the characters for a direct-to-DVD sequel. The potential sequel would have revolved around a forming love triangle between Abby, Chicken Little, and new student at the school, Raffaella. In an attempt to improve her chances with Chicken Little, Abby, the ugly duckling, gives herself a makeover. Information on just how far the film made it into development and when exactly it was cancelled is hard to come by. In Chicken Little, The Essential Guide, it was mentioned that a sequel was in the works. Todd Carter, who worked on the story development of Chicken Little 2, stated in an interview that the film was likely cancelled because it probably wouldn't have performed well. Carter posted these storyboards on his blog back in 2014. I've always had mixed opinions on Chicken Little. On one hand, I have quite a bit of nostalgia for it. It was one of, if not the first movie I watched in theaters, and every time I rewatch it, I'm reminded of that. On the other hand, I can acknowledge that it's not a good movie. It's needlessly mean-spirited, and the plot is just weird. I don't know, the whole alien concept is one that I have a hard time getting behind now that I'm an adult. It seems like there's also a lot of people who have similar opinions to me. A second Chicken Little would have been unnecessary. I don't think many people would have wanted it. Everyone on this planet has a dream. The question is how far you're willing to go to make it come true. Meet the Robinsons was released in 2007, and it's considered by many to be one of the Disney Animation Studios' most underrated movies. Soon after the film's release, a sequel from Disney Toon Studios was in the works. I struggled to find much information about this project with the only consistent fact being that the film was cancelled by John Lasseter after he became CEO of Disney's animation department. It's likely that if this was a real concept that was in the works at Disney Toon Studios, it probably didn't make it that far into development given the lack of media available and that Disney's deal with Pixar was made in 2006, the year before the original Meet the Robinsons hit theaters. Walt Disney Pictures presents a classic case of catnapping. They're gone! That's terrible. What's gonna happen to us? Starting from the mid-1990s throughout the late 2000s, Disney released dozens of direct-to-DVD sequels, midquels, and prequels to the classic animated films. Aristocats would have almost received the same treatment. With the original film being released in 1970, Aristocats 2 would have been released nearly 40 years later in 2008. Todd Carter also had a major role in working on this film. When recalling his time working on Aristocats 2, he stated, I really think this film was headed in the right direction. With another pass, we could have gotten it right. But there are other important considerations in making films of any kind. Making sure you have an audience for your movie is paramount. Disney just felt that the Aristocats 2 was in jeopardy of falling through the cracks in a competitive marketplace. Based on the little information I was able to find on the film's plot and production, I don't think it would have been particularly good or bad, just another average Disney direct-to-DVD sequel. Which in the end, I feel like it's probably how most of these cancelled movies would have turned out. So that pretty much wraps up this week's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on lost and obscure media from the 2000s. This channel is becoming really confusing, to be honest. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please feel free to comment those down below or email them to me at theshynovel at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!